One of my personal heroes is a guy named Adrian Rogers. Perhaps you've never heard of Adrian Rogers, but he was the pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, one of the most iconic churches in American history, I think. Adrian Rogers was kind of this larger-than-life figure. He was known by everyone. He shared stages with the most powerful people in all the world. And Adrian Rogers would often get invited to go speak at places. Well, he, when he would go and speak at places, I'm told from people that know him, of course, he's gone to be with the Lord at this point, but when he would go to speak at these places, before his engagement, there would usually be a room where all of the important people gathered and talked and, you know, gripped and grinned, if you will. One practice Adrian Rogers would do, though, is that when he walked into a room filled with, you know, quote-unquote important people, is he would always look for the least important person. And, of course, that's not a value idea. I'm talking about the person that's not the famous person, not the big leader. But he would always walk directly to that person, and he would begin to talk to that person. He would bypass all the dignitaries and all the figures and all the big name. Uh, presenters that were there at this event, and he would always go to this seemingly unknown person and begin to engage them. Why? Was he snubbing people? No. Adrian Rogers loved everyone, and he knew that everyone was made in the image of God, and they had great intrinsic value, not because of what they do or what their name is, but because God created them, and God sent His Son to die for them on the cross. And so as we think about Passion Week, I thought about that story in relation to one of the more iconic stories of Jesus during Passion Week. It happens early on, perhaps Monday or so in Passion Week. I'm going to read it to you out of Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple, and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him. For they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And when evening came, they went out of the city. We often read this story and we often focus on Jesus' anger or righteous indignation. And we say, look, you know, Jesus was mad righteously. I could be mad righteously. And perhaps there's, there's something to that. But I want to focus on something a little different here today. You know, you heard at the end of the story that the chief priests were becoming mad. They were already becoming angry at Jesus' following. They thought he would threaten their power. And so they're already beginning to plot his destruction. But listen to what Jesus says here. Listen to what he says about why he's cleansing the temple. Yes, they're turning into this consumeristic hub. Yes, they're turning into this buy and sell and trade things. But, but look what Jesus says there again in verse 17. Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? The temple of God was for the worship of God. And what had happened is these select group of people said, Nah, we're the ones that are really worshiping here. All these other people, all these Gentiles and other people who are coming, man, we'll just sell them things. We'll make a profit for them. They're not really able to worship anyways. But Jesus says that phrase right there that I think we often miss. For all nations, for all people, for all tongues, for all tribes, that's right, the story of Easter and the story of Passion Week is Jesus is heading to the cross, not for a select few of elites, not for a select few of important people, but Jesus is headed to the cross to voluntarily give His life, look what it says, for all nations. When Jesus dies on the cross and He earns salvation for you and I, when He pays our penalty, He does it for all nations. The temple doors flung wide open and said, all come in who worship the one and only God. You don't have to have a passport or an ID to prove where you live. You just have to come under the auspice of the blood of Jesus. So this week, as we start Passion Week, think about that phrase for a moment, that Jesus died for all nations. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. That's a big word there, world. All people, all types, all races, all ethnicities. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him 
will not perish, but have everlasting life. So you take those two phrases right there. You take the phrase, all nations, and you take the word world, and here's what we know. That the blood of Jesus on the cross is sufficient to cover the sins of man. God doesn't look for the most uh, dignitaries, or He doesn't look for the most educated. He doesn't look for the most important people in the room. Jesus died on the cross for all nations. Let's ponder on that this week of Holy Week. God bless you.